Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and other crafts that I get up to. Uh, my name's Jolene. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I wanted to take a moment at the beginning of this podcast to talk to you a little bit about um, some events that have happened recently in Canada. Um, 215 graves of small children were found on the site of a residential school in Kamloops. These graves were unmarked and undocumented, so these poor children, um, their story was lost. Their families were not informed of their loss, and communities um, are now mourning this horrendous find. Residential schools were something in Canada that were instituted by both the government and different religious groups to try to assimilate indigenous peoples. They took children from their families forcibly. They removed them from communities, the people that they knew. They took away their language, their culture, everything that was familiar to them. And survivors of residential schools are still dealing with the aftermath of their cruelty. And now I think Canada is trying to come to terms with the truth about this awful past. Um, I myself have taken this awful truth as uh, an impetus to learn more about Indigenous peoples, to learn more about their role in Canada today, to learn how to be open and uh, appreciative of um, so many rich cultures that were here before uh, settlers came and have not had the recognition or the respect that they deserve. And so I mourn with the Indigenous communities it's hard to fathom 215 small children lost to their families, to their communities, with no um, awareness of what happened to these poor children. Generations of people lost. Uh, it's heartbreaking. And as Canadians, as white Canadians, I think that it is my role to acknowledge this awful history to learn what the role of my ancestors were in this history and to learn more about the beautiful cultures of the indigenous people around where I live. I have had the opportunity in the last few years to, um, to learn more about indigenous cultures through um, dance, which sounds like a strange way to learn about indigenous peoples but um, my niece and nephew and my children have all been participating in um, dance in Ukrainian dance specifically in Edmonton and a couple of years ago they put on a show called Ancestors and Elders which was put on with indigenous groups um, in the Edmonton area to try to tell a story of when cultures come together to help each other instead of to harm. Um, that's a very small step in learning about the indigenous communities in Edmonton, but I want to spend my time learning about the indigenous groups here and learning more about the awful history of residential schools in Canada so that we can ensure that this type of um, discrimination does not happen again, but also to be sensitive to the survivors of such awful cruelty. So I thank you for joining me today. I hope you join me in my quest to learn more about the um, Indigenous peoples of where I am. Maybe this is a call to you to learn more about communities where you are who have been 
historically discriminated against and who um, are dealing with the aftermaths of that cruel and awful racism or discrimination. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I know that was pretty heavy for the opening of a knitting podcast, but it's important and um, it's important. But thank you for joining me. Uh, today I am wearing my outline tank. I'm going to stick some pictures in here. Um, it's finally warm in the Edmonton area. This week it's been quite hot actually. And um, there might be some thunder showers tonight, which I'm excited about for myself. I do love a good thunder shower. Uh, I don't know how Blue is going to manage with thunder showers, but I will keep you posted. Blue is currently off camera in his production facility slash crate, having a nap slash considering um, future content. So I will try and also include some pictures of Blue uh, later in the podcast if you're interested in puppies, and if you're not, that's fine too. Um, so I have been a little bit busy in the last couple of weeks. After my um, podcast last time, I was asked to talk a little bit about the tubular cast-on that I used for um, my Cozy, com Cozy Classic. I always get this wrong. Why do I always get it wrong? The Cozy Classic Light sweater that I've been working on. It is a long tail tubular cast-on, uh, which doesn't require waste yarn. And I actually did film a short tutorial, which you can find on my uh, channel, but I will also provide a link below. Um, now this is my very first tutorial, so be kind. <laughs> um, but I hope that it, it gave you um, the basics so that you could also um, practice working this long tail cast on yourselves. And uh, maybe it also gave you, will give you the um, courage to try other new cast ons or bind offs in your knitting. There are so many. Like when, when I learned how to knit, I learned I think the backwards loop cast on which is standard and then I went on to the long tail and then I was sophisticated because I knew too <laughs> but there's so many cast ons that I use uh, and now frequently I use this long tail cast on but I also use the uh, German or old, Nor old Norwegian cast on which is a twisted form of a long tail cast on uh, but there's so many different cast ons that you can use uh, for your different projects so I uh, encourage you to investigate some different ones for yourself so that um, video for the tutorial I will link to below, but you'll also be able to find it on my channel. The other thing that I was um, participating in the last couple of weeks was the Edmonton Fiber Frolic. This is a semi-annual knitting event. It's the first time it's been online. And there was a myriad of classes offered to knitters, crafters anywhere in the world. Um, there were, t in fact, teachers from anywhere in the world, from all over the place, who were gathered together to teach classes at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, as well as local um, vendors. And I participated in a needle punch class. Now, I have been interested in the idea of doing some needle punch, and um, I just never really took advantage of the opportunity of classes because there wasn't a pandemic on. But uh, when I saw there was a punch needle class at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, I absolutely signed up. It was taught by uh, Fern, Fern from Fern School of Craft, which was new to me, is a local um, craft school. She does a lot of weaving, but she also teaches knitting and punch needle. And uh, let me show you what I made. Now this is, uh, this is the um, right side. Punch needle is kind of um, an interesting craft because you use a, a needle to create loops um, in fabric. This is monk's cloth, which is used to hold the loops, um, but you punch it from the, the back side or the opposite side. Now, my daughters seem to think that this side is uh, more attractive and they think it's the right side, um, and it certainly could be. I think punch needle is somewhat versatile in that way. So this is the side that I punched down into, and this is the loops that were created. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring it on in. I'm gonna come a little closer. Um, now, I'm pretty happy with this as my very first attempt at punch needle. This is the first leaf I did, and I think that it's all quite um, even. 
And then I did some other ones when I when the class had finished <laughs> and they're not quite as even. So I think my work requires a little bit of practice, but I think it was it was really fun. It was super satisfying. Um, I really enjoyed it. I texted my friend while I was working on it. I said, you know what's fun? Stabbing something repeatedly. It was, it was great. So this piece is quite small. I don't think that it's going to be a, a cushion or anything. It's just, I think it's just too small. But I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And I think it might uh, turn into maybe a wall hanging. I'm not sure. I have to investigate my options. But what this, um, this craft did was um, sort of inspire me to try to do more punch needles. So I, um, once I finished this class, I went on to the Edmonton Public Library website, which is fabulous. In fact, there's an app, it's, it's wonderful. Um, and I placed a hold on a book on punch needle, which is done by uh, quite a famous, famous? <laughs> a, a crafter who's well known for her craft, uh, for her punch needle, and that is Buku. I'm going to place, uh, oh, you know what? I'll insert a picture of the book right here. Now, uh, she does a lot with punch needle. She not only creates um, beautiful designs, but also turns her work into various different things. I've seen her make um, bags, uh, the cover of uh, like a stool, a cushion, cushions definitely, uh, wall hangings. And I think what I would like to do possibly is investigate the possibility of making a rug. Um, uh, baby steps, right? First things first, but I really enjoyed my first foray into punch needle. It's really soothing um, and enjoyable, and I really enjoyed watching this pattern emerge uh, as I was as I was working it. So this is my first uh, foray into punch needle. I hope it's not my last because I really did enjoy it, and I think what I'm going to be doing is slowly as things open up around here. I'm going to be watching uh, Fern's School of Craft for future uh, classes in Punch Needle, or possibly um, she does one-on-one -on -one classes. So I might, um, that might be a good opportunity for me to get started on a rug, or um, at least sort of move in that direction. But my first step was to order a book from the library, and if I like it, then I, I may purchase it for myself. Um, so Punch Needling may be in my future. Uh, I really enjoyed I enjoyed the class it was very well taught um, and I enjoyed actually the practicality of doing punch needle so there may be more of that in my future um, I have some finished objects one of which is this um, outline tank which was almost completed the last time we spoke I just had to uh, drop some stitches as you do and uh, I've done that it's I blocked it it's great it fits really nicely I'm happy with the length of my straps here it fits me really nicely um, it's it's got some ease which I think is great the length is lovely so I've really enjoyed this pattern uh, now Jessie Mae has some new patterns out which is like an outline tee which might be enjoyable I find tank tops hard to find for myself and so um, Knitting them is a really good option for me, and I may think about knitting another outline tank, uh, possibly without the drop stitches, and just using the shape of the pattern, which I really like, and not doing the drop stitches, just to, for something different. I really enjoyed the yarn that I used, which is Mojave by Kelborn Yarns. So that's sort of percolating in the back of my brain, but my uh, outline tank is finished. And as you may remember, I am participating in Stash Dash, which is hosted by the Knit Girls. And uh, it allows you to count the s amount of uh, yarn you have worked through <clears throat> starting May 28th and going until the end of August. And so um, maybe you'd like to join me in keeping track of the amount of meters you have knit. Um, I use Ravelry. Um, to keep track of how much yardage I've used on a project. I know that Ravelry isn't open to everyone. I also use a bullet journal. Um, I find, I love bullet journals. I've always, since I was a girl, I always loved keeping track of things, writing things, making notes. Um, 
And so I have a little spot in my bullet journal which I can use to keep track of the amount of meters that I have knit. So one outlying tank done, stash dash meterage here for this. Now this is not my only finished object for this week. I have quite a few. Last weekend was the um, Flicker and Flame Weekend Knit Along hosted by Andrea Mowry. Um, the plan was to knit a hat over the weekend and her new hat, the Flicker and Flame. And this pattern came in a worsted version as well as a sport weight version and I knit both. This is the worsted version. I knit this using, um, whew, really bright, using a uh, custom woolen millen woolen mills yarn it is uh, a local to me mill and uh, this is in the cream colorway it's like a two ply it's quite a heavy worsted i would say and then the contrast color is a dyed uh, sorry it is a spin cycle dream state which is their worsted weight yarn which i find to be kind of a lightweight worsted anyway the two of them worked reasonably well together for this color work this was a part of a mill ends that I picked up from them a while ago and it's just been sitting in my stash waiting for the right project. And this used about 17 grams, I think, of the worsted weight. And I'm not sure how much of the main color it used, but maybe 30 grams. I definitely have more yarn that I could be making these flicker and flame hats with. But this is another going to find in my bullet journal where I kept track of this. Um, this is another project I have off the needles. This is the worsted weight version of the hat and this was 110 meters for those keeping track. And then I finished the sport weight version. This one's quite different, isn't it? I used um, Sheepy's Metropolis in the Miami colorway. And the contrast color is um, spin cycle dyed in the wool this time which is the sport weight version this is truth bomb and i love how okay hey i love how these two yarns knit up in color work like they just really play nicely together i think um also i love that the way that the way that the um dyed in the wool knit up to look like a rainbow during pride month i was pretty proud of myself that that's how that turned out um, so here's another um, flicker and flame hat. This one is uh, 135 meters because it's a sport weight. Use a little bit more for those keeping track. Then I finished some socks. Now these socks, I think you remember, I had just all I had to do left was um, Kitchener stitch the toe because it's important to get yourself ready <laughs> for stash dash to have a bunch of things ready to go to count for your meterage. Now. These are some coloring book yarns, socks. I cranked these puppies on my 3D printed circular sock machine. There are 76 stitches. And then for Stash Dash, I just turned my sock tube into some socks. I used Sheepings Metropolis in the Warsaw colorway for heels, cuffs, and toes. And so that's another pair of socks off the needles. These ones I think will be going to my husband. Um, partly because he's been so helpful in helping me to um, get my 3D sock machine working and to try and improve it in so many ways. And uh, Father's Day is coming up, so these will be for him uh, for Father's Day probably with a special pair of shoes that he doesn't know about, so don't tell him. These are 368 meters for my stash dash goal. Thank you very much. And finally, I have one more pair of socks these socks i also cranked on my circular sock machine but this time i used uh, the 64 stitch cylinder these are leftovers of some um, nomadic fibers yarn in the neville colorway this colorway is now called the botanist and i also used um, sheepy's metropolis in the warsaw colorway for the heels cuffs and toes now these socks are fraternal twins they don't exactly match and they're kind of shorties, which is fine with me. I don't care if my, the stripes on my socks match. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, and I know I like some shorty socks like this, um, but my daughter also might be interested. So I'll see if she's interested in some a new pair of socks. 
um, fresh off the needles. And these were 178 meters for my stash dash total. Um, um, I feel like having a lot of projects almost completed was very helpful in giving me a boost for stash dash to get right out of the gate. So what have I been working on now? I have two works in progress um, to share with you today. And then I have some plans. So, ooh. so the first um, work in progress I have is the Cozy Classic Light. This is knit in um, Sheepy's Skies. It's a cotton yarn and it's naturally dyed with indigo. Uh, and I don't know if you remember, but the indigo was coming off on my hands a lot when I, when I knit, which isn't a problem. It washes right off, but I do have plans to give this a really good soak in some vinegar water um, to try and get that dye to um, be more fixed to the yarn. Uh, now I have been alternating skeins, but you can see that the top of the yarn uh, or of the shirt is a bit darker and it gets, or sorry, a bit lighter and then it gets a bit darker underneath. That doesn't really bother me. It is a casual t-shirt and I think it's going to look just fine. I'm knitting this a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. I, uh, I think the pattern asks you to knit it to eight in the body to eight inches and then add two inches of ribbing. I'm knitting it a bit longer because that's just my preference. So I think I'm going to go to 10 inches for the body. Uh, and then I'm going to knit some ribbing. This is that tubular, long tail tubular cast off I was telling you about uh, at the beginning of the um, podcast. In this case, I knit a uh, one by one rib. When you cast on a tubular cast on, it's almost always one by one rib. It can be converted to a two by two rib, which I'm going to show you in a second. But this is what that, that cast on looks like. And again, there's a tutorial in the notes below if you're interested. I actually used that same cast on when I, oh, for this hat. In fact, this is what you see me casting on in the video. Um, oh, that's very blown out. I'm gonna back away from the, is that better? So this in fact was cast on as a one by one rib as well. And then um, you you sort of um, get the knitting going. Do You begin the tubular cast on and then when you're ready to start knitting, you simply shuffle some stitches around. Um, if you're interested, all of this is in the tutorial. It's not difficult, um, but that's what that looks like. Um, this is the two by two version of that long tail tubular cast on. And I also did it on this hat because I was just feeling it. I was just really feeling it. <laughs> so that's the two by two version of the tubu long tail tubular cast on. I hope you give it a try. I have one last thing, one last thing to share with you. And that is another sock tube that I am turning into a sock. Now, um, I was sort of inspired by that long tail tubular cast on um, to try a new bind off for my sock tubes. Um, here, so on, on these socks that I was doing, I did a like a very plain bind off and I, it was, it's just a little bit too sort of, it's not really flared, but it, it is a bit more flared I think than I would like it to be. This is just a simple um, knit one stitch, knit another stitch, knit those two stitches together through the back loop, keep going all the way around. Um, and it's certainly stretchy. It's, it's, it's great in that way, but I, I do find it's a little bit too gappy at the top. And I wanted to try something else. I know a lot of knitters enjoy um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And so I thought to myself, today, this morning in fact, uh, why don't, just give it a shot, what's the big deal? So um, I have this tube, this is a 76 stitch sock tube, so probably a man size sock. This is from the, uh, oh this is from Mustache Yarns, and I think it's called the Sorting Hat. Again another Harry Potter reference, mm, Harry Potter's author is problematic, um, so I don't want to support her in any way, but this colorway um, is, is named for that franchise, I guess. So what I did was um, I knit the cuff. This time I used some Knit Pick Stroll. I think this is the Jackrabbit Heather colorway, just because I thought I've been doing a lot of gray lately, time to mix things up. Anyway, so I did Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Cast On. And this one, it does, 
it does flare slightly at the top um, but Jenny wasn't lying when she said her her cast off was surprisingly stretchy because it certainly is but I what I like is that the ribbing seems to stay nice and sort of what's the word it doesn't seem stretched out whereas when I look at this one you see how it kind of just goes straight up it doesn't suck in in the same way so anyway uh, I guess the theme of today's um, today's podcast might be new beginnings and fresh endings um, for a lot of reasons uh, so yeah I'm into trying new things right now this is Je uh, Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off and I'm gonna be uh, doing the other sock and then giving uh, having my knitwear model try them on and let me know how he likes them um, in terms of a, of a cast on. So that's all I have on the needles this week. I do have some plans. My plans are to um, try to crank some more sock tubes um, just to sort of prepare myself for um, more knitting in uh, Stash Dash. I do have two one or two, I think this one and one more, um, 76 stitch sock tubes for man size socks or for bigger feet. And I think I have three more um, sock tubes for a 64 stitch foot. Um, so that's another, I guess, four um, pairs of socks that are just ready, waiting to be turned into socks. I also have. Um, some yarn that I wound up the other day to make a pavement sweater for myself. I'd made a pavement sweater for myself a number of years ago. I don't think I chose the right yarn. It was, I think, a single ply and quite, um, like it was like, it had cashmere in it. So that sweater pills a lot. Um, but I really loved wearing it. Like it was just a very wearable piece. So I think that I'm going to make up another pavement sweater and maybe retire the other one, depending on how threadbare it's looking. Um, so that's one thing that I think I have planned for the next little while. I also have um, a whole bunch of yarn wound up, leftovers of dyed in the wool from different projects like this flicker and flame hat, but other things too. And I'd like to turn that into a night shift shop. So I think that'll be a nice uh, change of pace from a lot of stockinette, which I've been knitting um, in the cozy classic light and also the, the pavement. So I think that having the, the night shift as a nice option and then uh, a pavement sweater once I've completed this cozy classic uh, with some sock tubes for palette cleansers. They do go quite quickly when I'm actually working on them because it, it doesn't really take that long to knit up. Uh, a cuff or a heel or a toe um, so you can I can just sort of fit them in as and when so those are my plans for the next little bit uh, it's now the middle of June my it's not the middle of June it's the beginning of June and my daughters have a couple more weeks of school left and then some exams and then they're off for the summer we don't have any firm plans I think partly because we weren't really sure what was happening with COVID but things are looking more open. So I think we might be heading to the mountains to do some hiking with Blue um, and just to get away for a little bit. Maybe swim in some lakes, maybe try stand up paddle boarding, maybe um, just spend some time um, in some place different. Um, so that's my plan. What are your plans for the spring and summer? Um, I always feel like June is like just the preamble, like summer's just around the corner so I think we're spending more time outside with blue going for walks or just hanging out in the backyard uh, and so it's nice that the warmer weather is here and I think it it brings a smile to more people um, and hope is around the corner with the vaccines uh, increasing here in Edmonton Alberta in Alberta um, more and more people are getting their second shots my mom just got her second vaccine this week um, and I think my husband and I will be able to sign up for our second shots um, in a week and a half. So I'm looking forward to 
things opening up a little bit and feeling a bit more free uh, and a bit, having life return to normal a little bit more. You may be happy to know that soccer season is starting on this Saturday. My daughters will be uh, hitting the turf, the pitch, <laughs> for some soccer practice uh, and it'll be great for them to get out of the house uh, and be around their soccer friends and just do something different, move in a different way. Um, they both love soccer and they both are quite competitive. So um, I think it'll be great for them to have something else to focus on, particularly since the soccer season this year is going to um, go right through July and August, I think. Um, so it'll give them something to, to, um, to concentrate on and to focus on uh, apart from um, just being off and relaxing in the summer and walking their dog. I thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope that you will join me in a few things. I hope you'll join me in a journey to learn more about uh, the Indigenous people wherever you are. For me that's the Indigenous people of Northern Alberta and I want to learn more about their cultures and I want to learn more about how to be respectful of the harm and the hurt that these people have gone through. Um, and to learn more about their beautiful crafts, the beading is just beautiful, um, their dance, their culture, their singing. I would encourage you to follow um, Notorious Cree. He is act I'm going to link him down below. He's active on Instagram and on um, TikTok, and he uh, is a champion for Indigenous dance, and he speaks so beautifully um, about the role of, of dance and culture in his life. Um, so I would encourage you to follow him because he's really um, both uh, gently informative um, but also a very talented performer. So I hope you enjoy him. So I hope you join me in a journey to learn more about the people who were where you are before you were there. I hope you also join me in uh, trying out a new craft like Punch Needle. Maybe you'll also join me on Stash Dash in an effort to use up some of the yarn that I have um, that has been languishing, that wants to be made into something special. I hope that in the next couple of weeks you find time to do something that you really love to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.